I want to go backwards for a second. Mm-hmm. You said you went to Miami when Puff was working on his album. Right. You said everybody was recording there. Who else was recording? Oh, uh, man, you had Loon there. G-Dep was there. Faith was there. New Edition was there. Um, um, you had Low Writers, Mario Winan. Man, everybody was there. Everybody from the, who, from the camp. Hood fellas was there. We all took a picture, remember, when we did the picture in Miami for the side. I remember it well. Family, all at the dining room table. Sherry Dennis was there. Everybody was there because he was working on the P. Diddy and the Family album. The saga continues. And, and if, you know, when you think about it, Prez, I'm sure you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, at that time, that was when he did the um, Puff Daddy and he sold 7 million units on the No Way Out. And then he went to get a new deal. And then he was going to be the artist coming off of the new label he had. He just struck a new, like a new deal, I believe. And then um, when he did the Bad Boy for Life video, he had kind of put everybody's budget money into this one song. You know what I'm saying? And then that's where everybody, that's where my budget was. Because I remember he used to always tell me that, you know what I'm saying? We got to, we, we got to, we got to, uh, we got to all cross our fingers and make sure that this album sells. Because if not, it was like we're going to be in trouble. So his album had to sell in order for us to, um, to I guess, for Bad Boy to look good. So that's why he did a, a, a Saga Continues, P. Diddy and the Family. So he put everything on one album. So it was like under one budget. So when okay. you act, yeah, you look at when, my- when, when, you say, when you say in Miami, he asked you to go write a record. Did he give you the beat? Did he give you the Bad Boy for Life beat to write to? Harv Pierre did. Harv Pierre was the one who mainly believed in me. And Harv, was, Harv wasn't going to let Puff drop me. Harv was like, Harv knew I, what the, about the skills. Harv knew Mark Curry was, was, was you know, something not to, you know, he was, he was definitely something. And so he was the one that was like, um, try the Bad Boy for Life. And when I did it, it was almost like, it, it, to me, the only probably reason why he let me get on that song was because other people liked it. And if you gave him an opportunity to when, when, when for, for clarity, when you say like he, Harf, are we Harf. talking about Diddy or are we talking about Harv Pierre? Harv Pierre. When Harv Pierre heard me do that, that bad boy for life, it was really him that got me on that song. But if you would have left it up to Diddy, it would have been Loom. Black Rob and Diddy. It wouldn't okay, have stop there for one back. second. Stop there for one second. How much of that song did you write? Did you write the hook? Did you go to write Puff's verse, or did you only write your verse? I only wrote my verse on that song, and Bristol okay. did the hook. But so, you, when go I ahead. I got there to Miami, Bristol couldn't get uh, he couldn't land the track. So every, it's a lot of people who was there working for a long time that couldn't get on one song. So I went in and started writing for some, like Bristow was my guy, man. I really, you know, rest in peace, Bristow. So I went and started writing songs for him so he can get on the song. And then we went and did the, um, the uh, remember, um, the, 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 the thing we did on the album is me and Bristow, look at the credits. Um, I helped, you know, that's what I helped do then. So when I went in, it was more like I went and did like maybe six. I kind of like was able to to pioneer and lead that record, that album. I was able to really get in there after I was going to get dropped. I was able to get in there and say, Puff, here's some vocals for you. Here's how you need to say this. This is what our song need to be about. Listen to what Jay-Z and the, what they doing at The Rock. You know, compare our songs to theirs. Compare, you know, it was like that. But um. To answer your question, you know, going back, just to make sure I did, um, I, I don't think that I would have, like he said, he was going to drop me from the label. And I had to do whatever, everything that I had to do at that time. It wasn't like somebody was liking me. You know, we we looking for a reason to get rid of you. So I, I was giving them more reason why you couldn't get rid of me because my skills. So... That's when I poured it out on him. I said, let me tell you about these songs I got. While you saying you're going to drop me, watch this. Bang. 
Oh, you gonna drop me? Bang! I just kept hitting them with songs. And that's what the best, the best way to always, you know, and I always say, my energy was the best way to explain yourself. You don't have to explain yourself through talking and saying, hey, you want to drop me and, you know, let's just do music. Let the music speak for itself. And the music was undeni und undeniable. You know, my lyrics, undeniable. So you couldn't deny them. Okay, before we move forward, I want to um, shout out Harv Pierre. You mentioned yeah. that name. Everybody who uh, follows music, especially during that, that golden age of hip-hop, Harv Pierre is a legend in the game. He was uh, president of Bad Boy. He was also the head of A&R yep. at that time that we're talking about. So shout to Harv. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.